Hey guys, I'm sorry I can't be there with you today. It was um, pretty crazy road conditions up here, so I decided it wasn't a good idea to risk it. Um, but I think we can work on this using this video format. So at this point, you have read now the supplemental, two supplemental texts, and then about two thirds of your World War II book. Hopefully by this point, you're even further than two thirds because you've been doing some reading. But it's time now to um, return back to our argumentative questions and decide what your stance is. Now, the supplemental text that I've been giving you, especially the ones that you were reading today, are quite um, opinionated, right? Uh, if you were reading Night, I gave you a Samantha Powers essay, and Samantha Power is like very notorious. Notorious is a too negative of a word, but she's kind of famous for wanting a lot of American intervention. Like she thinks that um, America should intervene whenever it can in cases of human rights atrocities. Or the if you were in the Eichmann in Jerusalem group, I gave you an essay about a woman who was saying that America should be more like Germany in the way that it treats monuments. And again, it's fairly one-sided. You know, she does not think there should be any Confederate monuments in the United States. Um, so, so some of your sources have been kind of biased, but I'm hoping that through discussion and through reading some multiple things, you've started to form your own opinions and are ready to write a thesis statement about your argumentative question. So I'm gonna write your argumentative questions here again. Ninth, it's about American intervention. If you are, intervention if you are writing about night or if you're if this is your argumentative question then you are thinking about should america ever get involved you're thinking about when they should get involved you should think about how they should get involved um and you're thinking about like what the circumstances then are going to be exactly when america gets involved in these kind of kind of atrocities Okay, if yours is Hiroshima, you're thinking about civilian casualties. And you're not just thinking about, is it justified in the bombing of Hiroshima? Because there have been many articles written about that. Um, let's kind of expand that and think about when or if ever you can justify civilian casualties in war. So justification for um, civilian casualties is what you're thinking about. And if you can, um, you're thinking about how? How can those be justified then? Um, okay, if you're doing Eichmann in Jerusalem, your question is about how do we treat our own country's atrocities? So when your own country participates in something that you're ashamed of, which uh, I, as far as I know, every country has done, <laughs> um, then you need to, you're trying to decide what do you do with that information? You can think about punishment. You can think about how to achieve justice. Um, or you can think about how to memorialize. And there's different tracks you can take there. And then if you are doing, if this is a man, the Primo Levi text, you're thinking about dehumanization. Now this is a tough one because the question isn't so simple as what's your plan for the future, right? Um, the question was about what are the effects of dehumanization? But what you could do is you could think about it in other contexts. So you could think about dehumanization in prisoners or in war or in um, immigration or in racism. You know, you can think about when dehumanization shows up in our own lives because it did not it does not just happen um, in the Holocaust and now we're done with it. It continues to be a tactic that people use. Um, you can think about what our response to this tactic of dehumanization should be, or you might think about what is the worst effect of dehumanization. And that could be kind of your, your focus. But as I want all the groups to look at this, as I'm like telling you what to write about, there are many options and you should not have to write about all of these options in your paper. In fact, there's no way you can. Your papers are going to be about three to four pages and they're going to include outside sources, which means your topic needs to be very, very narrow. So for example, if you're writing about um, Eichmann, for example, you should not write about how to punish war criminals and how to memorialize um, atrocities in your country. Like that is too big of a thesis statement. So let's do a sample thesis statement for Eichmann in Jerusalem. Let's do something like, let's 
let's see. No, not seek. Let's say we need to um, try and punish. No, that sounds weird. Like we need to, um, what I'm trying to say is have like a jury trial. We need to conduct a jury trial to assign responsibility to those who allowed the atrocities to happen. Let's just uh, actually delete that to assign responsibility. And let's say because um, victims of civil rights atrocities, let's say uh, victims, they're both victims because both direct and indirect victims. So what I'm talking about is like if it's a civil rights atrocity, whether or not you were punished, let's say it's uh, about the Holocaust, whether or not you were actually sent to a concentration camp doesn't really cover all the people who were affected by the crime, right? Um, Jewish people who escaped uh, from Germany and so never were persecuted by Nazis are still victims of a civil rights atrocity because they they watched, you know, all of their friends and and people of their same ethnicity being punished just because of their ethnicity. So, uh, sorry, I need to go back. When our country commits civil rights atrocities, we need to conduct a jury trial to assign responsibility because both direct and indirect uh, victims of civil rights atrocities deserve um, justice. I think that works. Okay, so in this one, I'm talking about um, not just, I'm not talking about war crimes, I'm talking about civil rights atrocities, and then I'm talking about um, direct and indirect victims. Um, they deserve justice. And so I've got here, all the parts of a thesis statement that you need to consider. Remember when we talked about thesis statements before and we talked about how you need to have a claim and you need to have a reason. Here is my claim. Oh, I'll bold it so that you can see it a little bit better. There we go. There's my claim. I'm saying this is what we need to do. This is my opinion on this, right? This is my plan. And then I have a reason why I think my claim is justified. And it is because these kind of victims need, deserve justice. So I have a claim and a reason in there very clearly. Let's talk about the dehumanization thesis statement so that you can see one other way to write a thesis statement. I'm still going to include a claim and a reason. But I'm also going to include like a hint at the counter argument. So I might say something here like, though um, it might be a more effective form of punishment, we should stop using dehumanizing techniques on prisoners because um, let's say because the goal of pun uh, imprisonment is eventual rehabilitation and you cannot recover from the effects of dehumanization. Um, I'm going to actually say and dehumanization has lasting effects. Okay, though it may be a, might be a more effective form of punishment, we should stop using dehumanizing techniques on prisoners because the goal of imprisonment is eventual rehabilitation and dehumanization has lasting effects. So what I've added here is a little hint at the counter argument. I'm giving them a little bit of a like, you know, sometimes this is true. You know, if we're thinking about it as an effective form of punishment, then yes, it can be a good thing. But we should stop doing it for these reasons. And some of your thesis statements, that will be a good way, especially for Knight and Hiroshima, that will be a good way of adding complexity to the thesis, where you say, sometimes it's good for America to intervene. However, in these instances, it doesn't work. Or in night, it would be like, or I'm um, sorry, in Hiroshima, sometimes civilian casualties are justified, but only in these situations, right? So the goal here is one, complexity and interest, complex and interesting, specific and focused. And let's say, um, actually, uh, let's say, I'm going to say specific is one <laughs> and focused is another. I'm kind of cheating. Okay, these are the goals of writing your thesis. 
goals for a good thesis statement. Number one, complex and interesting. You really want to get at something that's actually interesting to stay, say here. You want your essay to stand out as something that I haven't read a million times before. Number two, you want it to be specific. Notice here how specific my thesis statement is um, for both of them. It gives a very specific plan, a really specific goal. And then it's focused. You're not trying to talk about too much because your papers are only going to be three to four pages. Okay, now you're going to try to write a thesis statement. Write a thesis statement about your book and then submit it to this Canvas assignment.